Welcome to Twilight Imperium, Guide to Playing as the Muat. So the Muat are the race that start with a war sun. That is their defining feature. And we're going to dive deep into this strategy guide. We're going to, co I'm going to cover all the tactics, all the strategies, all the tricks that I know for playing with these guys. I've played around four to five games with the Muat. I've won three, lost one or two. That being said, two of my victories were kind of out of nowhere. Like, I scored four points in one turn with one of my victories and six points in another game through, Imper through Imperial and Secret Objectives and scoring other public objectives. And both of those two victories in particular uh, really did come out of nowhere. Like, I went into, in, into the winning turn, I, was, I did not think I was going to win, um, but throughout, throughout the game, throughout the turn, circumstances kind of fell into place through the other players' actions, opportunities opened up, and I was able to exploit those opportunities to carve a path to victory, basically. But, yeah, both of those two games, I was... You know, I was under the ra I was definitely under the radar. You know, there were other players who had more points than me, and you know, other than the table were more focused on you know taking them down a notch. So I was sort of able to, you know, sneak under the covers and you know take my victory. Let us start with our turn one play. So the more you start with, I'm going to move this here a little bit. You start with uh, a warson. Four infantry, two fighters, and a space dock. So you don't have a massive uh, fleet, but you do have a war sun. And your success with this race is very much dependent on how effectively you can utilize you know, your war sun advantage. So I've got an example map here. It's a, a rather optimistic example, but you know, an example nevertheless. And we will, we, will, we will run through this for our example, turn one. But let's first start with what you begin with in terms of technology as well. So if we go over to here, you start with um, the plasma scoring, and you have your promissory notes as well. And a special, a special shout out on your promissory note, actually, before we dive in. It is very powerful. The only four promissory notes in the game which have a stall ability. So see how this has um, action written on it? That means it's, a, it's a, treated as a component action, so it takes your turn to play this card. And what, so that, that in itself is very strong. Being able to stall for time is, you know, it's an incredibly powerful ability. But not only that, you essentially, the Muat hold the Death Star plans, so to speak. You have the blueprints to create war suns, and you have the power to give these blueprints to any other you know, player that's adjacent to you, or during the, um, during the agenda phase, any, anyone, any, anyone. You can, you can give this to anyone, and they can cash it in to instantly get war sun technology. And, and that is incredibly strong because war suns are the toughest you know tech to create. You know you need three red and one yellow. That's not an easy feat, by no means. And not only that, it's a free technology. So this helps whoever you give this card to. You know fulfill the various technology objectives that are scattered in the tier one, tier two decks. So that in itself is, it's, it's, it's probably the most powerful promissory note in the game. That being said, this isn't something you can just give away willy-nilly. It's so powerful to other players. You should only really bargain this for, you know, maybe 8 to 10 trade goods or something of that nature. This, this isn't something you give away cheaply. Because in the wrong hands, it will be your doom. Like, your one advantage is that you have a war sun. And if you, if you let other people start creating war suns, then, well, you, you've lost your advantage. The thing to bear in mind, though, 
is that even if you do give you know, war sums to people, they still have to acquire the trade goods to you know, pump them out. So definitely do not give this to the Mentak coalition or probably not the Hakan either. You know, races that are very strong at you know, gaining trade goods uh, isn't a good idea to give this card away to. But ironically, they're the races who are you know, most likely to be able to pay you a large sum to gain this promissory note from you. So it's a bit of a balancing act. Admittedly, I have never actually had the opportunity to trade this away. I've, I've offered, you know, there's been game states where I've offered to give it to like another player so that they can help, you know, crush the lead, crush the, um, the point leader. But in the end, I've just, I've just never been able to create a successful negotiation with it. But it's a very strong promissory note. It's definitely nice to have, you know, it's an ace up your sleeve. Try and leverage it if you can, but you know if it's it's another web, it's another tool at your disposal if nothing else. So let's also cover your special abilities. I can try and lower this down a little. There we go. So you have Star Forge and Gaslight Physiology. So Star Forge, basically as a component action. You are allowed to, um, it's not produce, you, you gain, you place either two fighters or a destroyer in a system that contains one of your war sons. This ability is incredible. Make no mistake, this is such a powerful ability. Not only does it let you stall, and stalling in Twilight Imperium is very powerful, only three races have a stall ability printed on their faction sheet. The Mawat, the Soul, and uh, the Goblin, the, the, the Usarial Tribes. They're the only three that have a component stall ability printed on their faction sheet. And of those three, arguably the Mu'at is the strongest. Maybe, maybe the, the, the Usarial Tribes is better because you can easily just stall for, <laughs> for eternity with those guys. But anyway, being able to protect your war sun while it's out and about is huge. Absolutely huge. Make no mistake. Because the thing is, this lessens your reliance on having to build space docks as you move out. Because you can just reinforce your war sum whenever. I mean, it's, it's costly, you know. You do have to spend a token from strategy. It is, and this is a race that struggles with getting strategy tokens in the first instance. So it is definitely costly. But Starforge is, is powerful. I have, I have won games just by stalling. In fact, those two games that I won, where I came out of nowhere, I did so by stalling for like two turns with Starforge. And then when the coast was clear, I was able to move in and mop up. It's very powerful. And being able to... You either get two fighters, so that's two hits, or one destroyer. And I'm going to talk more about destroyers later. But basically... Your, your, this race, through my experimentation, I found is most devastating when you have a fleet, of, a fleet with a war sun backed with fighter screens and one or two destroyers. Do not bother with cruisers, do not bother with dreadnoughts, and I will, I will explain why further in the video. And for Gaslight Physiology, so your ships can move through supernovas. This is, it's, it's nice to have, like, it, it's, a, it's a niche ability. You know, depending on the board, um, it could prove to be really useful. It could also prove to be, you know, absolutely useless. If you play the official rules and you draft your starting tiles, and you manage to draft the supernova tile, this bad boy right here, then you're laughing. But normally, when I play with my friends, we just we just do um, a random uh, simulation. We use an app and we just randomly um, simulate the board. So it's very hit and miss. But, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to have, if nothing else. Okay, let's consider strategy cards for turn one. So I've played, I've, I've played a three-player, a four-player, and a five-player game with these guys. We have yet to do a six-player game because every time we try and arrange one, someone bails last minute. 
literally, like, the last six-player game we tried to arrange, on the day, like, half an hour before we were starting, someone bailed. So, we will get there. We will definitely have our six-player game someday. When that will be, I do not know, but hopefully soon. Because Twilight Imperium is amazing. But yes, let's, let's move on to um, turn one. Turn one. What does this race want to accomplish, turn one? The, the thing with the Moa is that there's so many things they need to do, really. Um, there's a lot they need to be doing, but they can't do everything because you're just limited in what you can do. <sighs> but let's see. Your top priority, your, actually, your number one priority is to use the primary or secondary of warfare to capture more planets. Because as it stands, you only have this war sun to move to move and take planets. So if you take if you do end up with warfare, you can use the primary and move your war sun twice. That is very strong in it, in and of itself. That gets you very close to Mechatol Rex, for example, or you could try and move outwards and you know threaten a neighbor potentially. So that, that's very strong. Failing that, if you don't, if you don't get warfare, um, then you definitely want to try spend on the secondary. And what you would do with that then is, for example, um, you would exhaust your planet, your 4-1, which is a strong starting planet to have. You know, four uh, resources, you've, you've got the magic four, and, it's and I call it the magic four because it allows you to use the secondary of um, technology as well. So that's why it's called the Magic Four. So yeah, you can um, use uh, the secondary of warfare to create, you, you need a carrier for three, and then either you know, two more ground force or you know, two fighters, what, what, whatever you prefer really. And then you then move them out to you know, take some more planets basically. So you need, that's, that's your top priority. That's your number one priority is, is getting the secondary or the primary of warfare to capture more planets. You don't want to be going into turn two with only, you know, one, capture, one, type, one system of planets captured. That's, that's not a good place to be. And then it's closely followed up, your second objective is to research technology, if you can. And there's a number of tech paths that you can take, which I will probably go into more detail later. But those are your two, the two priorities. Move out, research tech. There's, I mean, there's so much more you want to be doing, like getting more command tokens, for example. But you, you, can't, you, can't, do, you can't do everything. You, you just, with the strategy how I play these guys, you just have to accept that you're going to struggle on command tokens. And that's, that's just how it is, unfortunately. With that said, let's run through each of the strategy cards. Starting with leadership. Which, let's just angle this slightly. There we go, it's a bit better. There, leadership. Now here's the thing. All three games that I've won with the Moat, I have never picked leadership. I mean, it's, it, I never had the opportunity picking at turn one anyway. It was always taken before it. But forget, forget in turn one, even throughout the course of the game, I never picked leadership. Leadership is powerful, do not get me wrong. But I always relied on someone else picking leadership and then sort of leeching off the secondary in order to sustain my command tokens. That is that is that has worked for me in the, those three those three victories that has worked for me. I always try and leech off the secondary of leadership. I I never pick it. Admittedly, there was what in the five player game there was one turn where no one picked leadership, and I was I was a bit screwed. I think I did that one or two actions and passed or something. But most of the time, you know, someone is going to take it. So let just let someone else take it and feed off the secondary to sustain yourself. That is my advice. That is what works for me. Next up, diplomacy. Yeah, again, I, I never pick diplomacy unless, you know, it's a four-player game and I have no choice or whatever. 
But yeah, again, I mean, diplomacy is just, oh, it's the secondary is so powerful to your opponents that you have to be really, really careful when you've taken diplomacy because it can really screw you. That being said, though, there are, if you, like, if we take this stunning situation here where you have the red tech skip, if in, this is probably more applicable to a three or four player game. You could maybe set up a, a scenario where you take the, you know, you take this, maybe you get the secondary of warfare, you know, you, you, you refresh some planets, you flip this over, and you can accelerate your, um, your technology spend. If it wasn't red, maybe it's blue, for example, and then you can go straight into gravity drive turn one instead of you know taking anti. I do like anti mass though. Anti, I know. I like anti mass this race because it it just means that no tile is is safe apart from you know the gravity rift and the nebula. You know you can which you know you don't really want to be sending your war sun into either of those. But yeah, but also being able to. Um, you know, minus one on the space cannon of enemy PDSs is it, it's nice. It's it's sneaky good. It is sneaky good. But anyway, yeah, being able so that's 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 a potentiality to, to diplomacy. But really, um, I I I avoid it like the plague. I just lead, leadership and diplomacy. I try not to take these if if I can help it. Next up, politics. This is this is like. It's good. Politics is good. I try not to take it turn one, but there's been a... I, I, I often end up taking it because, well, usually the, the other strategy cards I do want are already taken. So if you, can't, if you can't get the good stuff, like the technology, the warfare, the trade, if you can't get those, then take politics and then set up for strong turn two. That's really all there is to it with politics. And, you know, drawing, drawing the action cards is good as well, and I'll probably talk more about that further in the video. Construction. Um, yeah, don't really need a turn one. Um, ideally, by turn two, you want to have um, a PDS in your home system. Because certainly by turn three, you know, you are, your home system is potentially at threat. You know, by, by turn three, people are going to have movement three, um, dreadnoughts, and I mean, if the ghosts of Korea are on board, that's even more treacherous because they, they can probably threaten you by like turn two. But so yeah, by turn two at the latest, if possible, try and get a PDS on your home system. I mean, you start with plasma scoring anyway, so, you know, PDS is good for you. You can benefit from your plasma scoring. Um, whether you build the PDS through the primary or secondary of construction, it doesn't matter too much, but just, just try and get one on your home system by turn two, if, if you can. There's, there's so many things you need to be doing, but it, it's a good idea to try and do that, if, if possible. But yeah, I don't tend to take, take construction turn one either. Um, trade? Trade is strong. I mean, you've got four commodities, you know, people are going to want to trade with you. There are only f um, five races in total which start with four commodities. Uh, if I try and name off the top of my head, the Yisha Kingdoms, the Trolna, um, the Federation of Seoul, the Muat of course, and the Ghosts of Krius. And of those five races, you are the weakest in terms of, you know, playability. So, what this means is people are probably more likely to trade with you than anyone else that has four commodities, if, if possible. Um, and the, of course, the, the, you've got the Hakan as well, who have six, but then they can trade with, with anyone they want. And if the Hakan is on the table, they are likely to seek you out before any other um, four commodity race. Again, because your your faction is is it's hard to play. It's a hard to play faction. Uh, the Muat they have a bit of a slow early game, but once you get the right pieces in place, they can really get going and they can really be devastating. But the early game takes a lot of work. So trade trade is good if you can if to take turn one. Um, 
It's unlikely you'd be able to trade your commodities turn one unless someone moves towards you or something of that nature. But, you know, you'd probably try and set up a trade for turn two or something in the worst case scenario. But yeah, tra trade is good. Trade is definitely good. Next up is Warfare. Of, of all the strategy cards, Warfare is my favourite in general. And it is one of your strongest picks, turn one, definitely. Um, you know, the War Sun is terrifying against quite a few opponents. There's, there's some who could probably not care so much about it, but most, most, most people will fear the War Sun, and being able to just move it out twice in, in your first turn really gets it out there and really establishes a bit of an intimidating presence, which people will need to, you know, be very diplomatic and cautious of. Uh, that being said, I'm going to jump the gun a little bit. Do not do something stupid like um, recklessly attack with your war son. I mean, I, I, I have made this mistake. On turn two, I, I sent it into someone's home system. They had four PDSs. I, I didn't have anti-mass, but they, they, they landed hits. Uh, they, they landed all four PDS shots. I lost my fighter screen. True, I took the home system, but on the following turn, they just, they just fired off their PDSs again and bombed my um, War Sun, and that set me back two turns, in fact. It took me two turns of loitering around in my home system to try and um, rebuild, rebuild my lost War Sun. And during that time, I had a couple of carriers out on the board, and because I had no War Sun, uh, my neighbours just obliterated my carriers and stole most of my planets. So yeah, um, the good thing with, with war, the secondary of warfare, you know, you can just create a carrier and send it out with two flagmen on their own. You don't even need any fighters, because the thing is, you've got Big Brother War Sun nearby, and once you have um, gravity drive, you should always be seeking to move your carrier first and leaving your War Sun loitering around for as long as possible. This... So, so if anyone attacks your carrier, you know, you, you can just move, move your big brother in and smash him. That's the idea. So, yeah, you can leave your carriers relatively undefended. This is normally what I do. I just have a carrier and two flagmen just roaming around, and big brother war sun's always on, on watch. And that, that works really well. Uh, but yeah, back to warfare. Yeah, definitely a strong pick. Um... Yeah, just get your war sun right into the right into the action. Very good. And um, my personal preference, technology. I think this is the best um, turn one. But ultimately, um, technology, warfare, and trade, all three of these can facilitate what you're after. You know, get, getting getting two movements, capturing multiple planets, multiple systems. Sorry. You know, getting the secondary, getting, being able to research technology, all three of these, in some manner or another, will allow you to facilitate those two objectives. And the reason why I put technology at the forefront is because of the possibility, although not very likely in the five or six player, but more so in the three or four, there's a possibility that you might be able to research two tech on your first turn if you manage to take this, either through taking technology and trade, or even tech and diplomacy. Th that, if you get either of those two in conjunction, you are likely to be able to research two tech in one turn, and that is very, very, very powerful if you can pull that off. And finally, we have Imperial. Um, yeah... <laughs> Not the, not the best to take for turn. It, it, not the best to take for turn one, but you know you get a, a special special shout out because it does set you all the way, puts you last in initiative order, which means you're very likely to be able to take the secondaries of warfare and technology, and it will also save you um, a command token in the future. Um, you won't need to dig for as many um, secret objectives. So you know, as a long term, it, it can be okay, but. Generally speaking, I'm not really going to be, you know, seeking this out. So in, in so let's order these. Let's order these from best to worst. Top choice technology. You know, it gets the. It, I'll leave it here. It gets the job done. 
research in tech is strong. And you have the possibility of getting to tech, so why not? Next up is warfare. That's a close second, you know, the close, close second. Both are good. Technology and warfare are both good. Um, yeah, with warfare, like I said, you know, you get to capture multiple systems, very strong. You only have one um, carrying capacity unit, so yeah, you really need to get moving. So war and warfare will help you do that. Third choice is trade. So with trade, you get three trade goods plus four from your starting system. With that, you're allowed to spend four to research a secondary of tech. And with the secondary of warfare, you can spend your three trade goods to create a carrier and then move that out. So again, trade allows you to accomplish both of your turn one objectives. If these three are already taken off the board, then take politics and set up for a strong turn two play. Um, afterwards, mm, uh, it gets a little bit more interesting, doesn't it? Um, I'm going to say leadership. I'll put leadership next. Leadership is strong, don't get me wrong. I've just, I just never get the opportunity to take a turn one. It's just never happened. But if, if, if by some miracle it's still there, then yeah, take it. After which, um, uh, diplomacy dependent, you have to be careful of this. I'm going to put these two on equivalent standing, actually. Because it depends on the board state. You've got to be really careful with this. Because, um, you, you could, because you know, if you take diplomacy, someone else has taken tech, you can then allow that person to research two tech. And that is pretty disastrous. So be very, very careful taking diplomacy. Read the board state. Uh, construction, you know, if, if this is a bad board state, then take construction. Because you can set up... Um, it just, it just lets you protect your home system straight away, and it's going to make it <clears throat> not very appealing for people to um, attack, attack you, which is, you know, great. Definitely great. You would you have to do this at some stage, so, yeah, if, if it's turn one, so be it. And, yeah, I know, last but not least, Imperium. Well, actually, this is going to go down here as well, maybe. Mm, well, maybe not, actually, I'll put it there. Um, yeah, it should go there. You don't, you don't really want to be taking Imperial, but, you know, like I said, it has the nice benefit of putting you at the very back end of the turn order. But you have a stall ability anyway, um, but then you only have two in your, two in your strategy. So, yeah, being, being taking this and going last is, is good, definitely. And speaking, speaking of, um, uh, command tokens, uh, another another benefit of warfare actually, which I overlooked, is that you are able to rearrange your your starting your command tokens. So here, um, early game, you you don't need three in your fleet. You can easily get away with, with having two. So if you, if you take warfare, to move on from your fleet into your strategy, and you'll be fine. You could even go down to one. I mean, I, I did that in one of my games. I went down to one. I stayed on one for a couple of turns. But um, I, tr I, try, I try and avoid going all the way down to one now. Um, because there's a couple of races that have these annoying abilities that where they can um, assign damage to your non-fighter ships. And because of that, I like to try and keep two fleet supply and then have like like a destroyer or something along with your war sun by turn three at the latest or something. But yeah, you know, turn one and two, you can get away with maybe having one to lead supply, but from turn three onwards, you're going to want to have at least two. So yeah, that's, that's another benefit of warfare, which I just, I just overlooked that.